Good to see you again, bud. How are you feeling since yesterday? I feel great, same man. Th the same, same deal? Yeah, man. Enjoying um, Hawaii. You know, I feel great. Talk to me a little bit about, uh, I guess, the path to get here and, and who you've had to go through and what you feel like the challenge is um, on Saturday night. I mean, is this a bigger challenge than, than the first two fights in the tournament? Or do you feel like maybe you had it a little bit tougher in those first two and this is going to be a breeze? Um, you know, I, um, I expect the biggest challenge. You know, I, um, I'm ready for the biggest challenge. You know, I don't mind if it's harder than my first two fights. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, by any means am I, do I underestimate his skills? You know, I know where he's dangerous and I'm uh, confident that my ability um, can warp his style. You know, I feel, um, I have a much belief in my uh, skill set and I feel like my skill set matches horribly with his and I could put him away. Um, now comparing him to my last two fights, you know, I'm not sure, that doesn't really matter if it is, you know, but I'm ready for the hardest or the easiest fight of my life, but I'm prepared for the hardest, you know. Is, um, is that piece of hardware in front of you bigger and, and more important than the giant fake check that you'll get if you get your hand raised on Saturday? Or that check's pretty good too, of course, but. Yeah, um, I fight to be the best. So when I got into this, I wanted to be the best in the world. And um, that's what I'm chasing. I believe I'm the best band and weight, 135 pounder in the world. And um, with this belt, it'll, um, you know, it'll give me more notoriety to say that. Um, the money, you know, I didn't get involved with this just for the sole fact of money. Um, when I got started fighting and I went on that humongous streak, you know, 24 fights in a row, it was not for money. Saturday night, it will not just be for money. It'll be to call myself the best band and weight in this division. And um, it'll be to claim this belt. Uh, the first time, September 12, 2020, I uh, fell short. It's the only loss, burning a hole in my record, on my mind, and um, it was a longer road than just these fights in this tournament to get here. You know, I had to go through Albert Morales on short notice. I had to go through James Gallagher in Ireland, hostile territory. I think that fight, stylistically, might even be a harder fight, you know, than him. You know, you put him on the floor with James, I, I don't even know if he, if James can't submit him, you know? So, you know, styles make fights, and, um, you know, I took a long road to get here, four fights, uh, four fight winning streak, a few years, you know, on the plus side, getting ready, and, you know, now Saturday, it's all about claiming this gold. He told us yesterday that uh, he feels like this final is, is probably the best matchup that, that could have happened coming out of this tournament, but he was a little surprised that you were here. Gave you all, all props for your skills, all that kind of stuff, but he, he thought... I felt like he was the underdog maybe in the first couple of fights. And, and yeah, maybe I was a little surprised to see him there. What do you think about him being in the final? And is he who you expected to see standing across from you on Saturday night the whole time? Um, you know, I didn't know who to expect. Um, you know, I just figured the bracket would play itself out. I didn't look too far into it and think like who would be on the other side if had it made it to the final. Um, all I thought is maybe, you know, Kyoji Horiguchi might have been the better, the best guy before the tournament had started and I had him first round. That's all I had thought. And, um, you know, it surprises me when a lot of these people underestimate me, you know. But, you know, I've never been finished. You know, he has. I've never been knocked out. I've never been submitted. He has, you know. Um, my loss is a razor close loss to Juan Archuleta in a fight where I was dominating until I got tired, you know. I could be sitting up here easily 18 and 0 had I don't get tired and end up in the bottom of a scramble or two, you know? Had I got a little better pre preparation and you know it wasn't during COVID when gyms were closed and it was hard to get training partners, you know? Now I'm here full force, better, stronger, older, wiser, you know, um in my brain I'm you know, in my brain as I said, I I have a loss, but to me it's a lesson. You know, no man's ever trumped me out there. One man has survived me. And Saturday night, I'm gonna dominate him and come to finish him. And we'll see if he survives. And if he does survive him, I'm gonna make sure I dominate it every round so that no judge can score it in the other fashion, you know, in the other favor. So, 
you know, this is going to be my coming out party. I'm the guy. I'm the most dangerous guy. I'm the finisher here. I have more finishes than him. I have more rounds won than him. You know, I have more fights than him. If you look at my amateur career, you know, I'm ready to go out there and I'm ready to finish him. I'm ready to go out there and finish my business. And it's, you know, it's me versus him. All those other fights, all this other stuff, it really doesn't matter. Saturday night, it's me versus him, one versus one. And um, I'm going to beat up Rufian Stotts. We talked yesterday uh, briefly about, you know, now you're not just per needing to think down the road about, okay, if I win, I've got Sergio. Now you got to wonder about Sergio or, or Pitbull. So I guess I'm curious what you think about Pitbull moving down to 135. Do you think it's going to be hard on him? Do you think he's crazy from having been at 55 and 45 and, and that 35 might be a tough cut for him? Do you know it? Do you have any inside info about what this might be like for him? And do you think he's making a, a smart move, I guess, um, to go this route? I think it's great, you know, great for the division, great for the promotion. I have a lot of respect for uh, Patricio Pitbull for moving down, for trying to chase history. You know, to be a three-weight world champion is hard to do. He defeated Michael Chandler, knocked him out for the 155-pound belt. He was the only person to defeat AJ McKee at 145 for that belt. You know, he was a longtime holder of that belt. And now he goes to try to become a three-way three world champion. Um, now he'll be a 135-pound contender against Sergio Pettis. And um, no, nothing but respect. I hope that he gets it done. I want to fight the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the Bellator roster. I want a chance at the number one guy. Um, you know, the true number one right now, that's the record. You know, that's what it says. So I want him to win. I want to test myself with all the momentum against the number one guy. And if uh, Sergio does get the job done, he'll have, you know, been the one to get the number one guy. So either way, I have a super fight lined up after this. And uh, Saturday night, you know, it's even bigger than for me than punching my way from that MAGA fight to the finale, you know. Saturday night, I want to punch myself into a super fight of the ages. And, um, you know, people don't know it yet, but my team, myself, we all know, you know. I'm, I'm the best, I'm one of the best Bantamweights in the world. I believe I'm the best Bantamweight in the world. My team and, you know, myself, more importantly, we know. And um, all I have to do is just go out there, be myself, and uh, I'll prove it. Speaking of your team, obviously you also spoke on the journey you've had to prove yourself from your lone loss. Now, Patch, anyone following your career knows you've had all the skills, intangibles, the tangibles, to where if we were to have to make a bet, I'm sure most of us will bet that you'd be doing good. So that's not a surprise. But can I ask you about this recent streak? It also coincides with training in Las Vegas. And again, training with high-level talent, nothing new to you. But speak about that. Syndicate, Extreme Couture, maybe unheralded coaches like the Nate Pettits of the world. Is there something that's been going on that you figured out behind the scenes as well? Yeah, um, my training regimen was completely different at Jackson Wink. I trained almost as a hobbyist, you know. I went to the gym, and it was all watered, you know, no offense to them, but at the time, it was a little bit watered down. I trained with a lot of amateur fighters, a lot of low-level pro fighters. Inside the training rooms now, I only train with world champions. I only train with people that can contend for world championships. I train with guys that are undefeated, that are coming up, that are the best in any room. Um, the Javid, Farid, Basharat brothers, um, they're both in the UFC. Amir Albazi, uh, the Kobe Fairs, um, the, you know, the Dan Ige's, the, um, I have so many training partners. And then I also train with, um, outside in Vegas, with a lot of jujitsu competitors, Andy Varala, um, I was just on the mat with Cody Steele, um, Damian Anderson, uh, JT Torres, Gary Tonin, you know, my coach Jake Shields, so many of the highest level uh, jiu-jitsu competitors, and then also my coach Harry St. Ledger, um, you know, like you said, the, the coaches of the world, the Nate Pettits, the Harry St. Ledgers, you know, uh, my coach Harry and me, we're, we, set us out, we set out to win a world title a couple of years ago, and uh, he's been with me ever since then, and um, I was so young, and uh, I was such a finisher that when I got there, I got so excited to try to finish, and I used so much energy, so we, you know, like you said, we made adjustments, and, you know, he came with me to Las Vegas, even though he was in um, Albuquerque with me, he flies to Las Vegas to um, help me close out my jiu-jitsu, you know, all the you know, the things that we feel we need to focus for this fight. He flew out and helped me. Um, and having the training partners and him overseeing it, I felt like, um, you know, I've leveled up a lot um, just in the last couple months, not even just in the last couple of years. And um, I really found my home in Las Vegas. 
And, um, you know, this is going to be a very, very dangerous version of myself. And I'm just excited to see it for myself. You know, I want to, um, you know, I want to look back on this uh, day on Saturday night and, um, you know, I want to feel that I just put my best, put my, my best foot forward and, um, you know, gave, gave it my all. Because if I do that, I'm, I'm very dangerous and I'm very exciting, you know? Fantastic. And obviously, you're, you're the type to be looking forward as you should. You don't want to look backward. And when you get the belt, people come to you. You don't necessarily have to call people out, right? That being said, you did speak about uh, the burning in your soul as the, as the verbiage you used a bit. Do you, is there a party that still wants to get that back with Archuleta? And a second part, how do you think that fight would go now if they were to replay it, let's just say, randomly? Yeah, you know, um, I have a lot of respect for Juan Archuleta, you know. He gave me uh, some lessons in my life and uh, in my career, you know, that I needed um, at the time that I needed them, you know. Um, just about preparing for fights, training, staying disciplined, because the way he beat me was being um, a better trained athlete, a more disciplined athlete, and um, a better cardio athlete, you know. He burned me in the cardio and, um, you know, more respect to him. But um, yes, you know, over time, I feel like we will run that one back. He's on a tear right now. I think he's going to go win the Risen belt. And, um, you know, after he goes and does his business, I think he'll win that belt. I handle, you know, this fight and Patricio looking forward and or Pettis, you know. I feel like that fight happens on the line. And, um, you know, you, you best assure I'm coming for that one back on my record. You know, I want that one so I could erase it. So, you know, much respect to him. But we'll run it down the line in a crazy super fight. Um, within the next year, if, uh, if my money was right. Hey, Patchy, Kay Williams for Can Chronicles Media. You know Stotts is known to um, antagonize his opponents. Uh, he loves to taunt, him, taunt his opponents as well. Um, how much will you use that as fuel for Saturday's match? Yeah, you know, I, aside from interviews and, you know, like selling the fight, you know, him talking... I, it's, it doesn't really weigh too much on me when it comes to fighting. Our skill sets are our skill sets. I don't want to hurt him any more or any less because he was talking. You know, um, granted, let's say, maybe it'd feel a little better if I put him through the ringer as opposed to getting a quick submission on him. Like some people, I submit him, and I don't even do no damage to him. You know what I mean? Maybe it'd make me feel better, but uh, to say, like, you know, I'm going out there to finish him as fast as I could. If I could go take his neck, in the first 10 seconds, I'll take his neck in the first 10 seconds, you know. Him and his antagonizing ways, I think that it's just insecurities talking, and um, it only puts pressure on him, you know. I don't feel any pressure for him to run his mouth and, uh, you know, kind of antagonize me or nothing. It won't change my game plan at all. Um, I will go out there and I'll dominate him, and um, as I'm doing that, you know, he'll, he'll soon realize that, you know, all that shit he was talking didn't really matter. <laughs>